Welcome everybody. We'll be getting started in about another minute. So uh, relax, get yourself a cup of coffee and get ready for a great webinar. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, your host today, and we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people or projects, or maybe you lead teams or a company or your own business, we select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Now, our webinar is just shy of an hour, and somewhere around the halfway mark, we'll be answering any questions you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. So you can submit your question using the Q&A feature on the toolbar. Now, the focus of our webinar today is, are you linked in or are you left out? And I'm excited to introduce our thought leader today, Ms. Rhonda Scher. Uh, born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts, Rhonda graduated from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst in legal studies. Rhonda now lives in Murrieta, California with her husband, Bob, of 30 plus years and has two daughters, Stephanie, who is 29, and Vanessa, who's 27. Rhonda worked as a paralegal for 20 years and has been a serial entrepreneur for the past 20 years. A shift in her personal and professional life is the reason for her success today. Rhonda is one of America's leading authorities on LinkedIn, business, networking, and relationship marketing, and the creator of the Two Minute Networker. Rhonda Scher has cracked the code for leveraging LinkedIn and mastering the art of business networking. Best-selling author of four books and multiple action guides, Rhonda breaks down the process of going from creating the connection to monetizing it. Her practical step-by-step -step strategies can help every professional and entrepreneur, from the novice to the experienced, take immediate action to create relationships that generate real revenue. Thank you, Rhonda, for being our thought leader today. Oh, I'm happy to be here, Patty. So let's, let's see, I can, I just want to make sure that we're good with this and I can yeah, take over. Yeah, you should have the calm. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So one of the things that I found, Patty, is that most people don't really understand that LinkedIn is literally the number one social networking site for business professionals. And the, the power of LinkedIn is often overlooked by business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, just about everybody. And when you start to look at some of the statistics and some of the numbers with LinkedIn, you, you don't ask the question anymore, why LinkedIn? And I'm gonna talk about today, some of the statistics that will absolutely you know, make your mouth drop because people don't realize that LinkedIn is probably one of the most powerful vehicles out there today to grow your business. Now, let's see it. There we go. Can we make this slide work? There we go. 80% of B2B leads today generated from social media come from LinkedIn. And a lot of people think, well, you know, if I'm not looking for a job or I'm not looking for clients, should I be on LinkedIn? 
The answer is yes. And I'm going to talk about that later when I talk about your digital footprint and how people actually do go and look for you. Because every two seconds, or every second now, two new people join LinkedIn. It used to be every two seconds, and now it's every second. So can you imagine the number of people that are on this platform and the amount of information that you can get from looking up somebody on LinkedIn and learning about them? And you can learn where they went to school, what's important to them. There's so much information out there. So again, I can't reiterate enough that LinkedIn is literally 277% more effective at converting business than Facebook or Twitter. It was created for professionals so that they could network and connect on a professional level. It is not Facebook. So let's just talk about some of the facts, which if you know it, great, it's confirmation. And if you don't know it, it's really good information because I have a feeling after you learn this, you're gonna wanna take another look at your LinkedIn profile and how you're using LinkedIn. It is the number one most used social media platform among Fortune 500 companies with over half a billion users. Now here's an interesting statistic of the, 2 billion millennials globally, 87 million of them are on LinkedIn. That's a lot of millennials. And believe me, I gave birth to two of them and I know they're both on LinkedIn. Over 260 million LinkedIn users log in each month. So what does this all mean to you? It means that if you haven't been paying attention to LinkedIn, you might want to take a second look. Because of the 62 million LinkedIn users that are out there, or sorry, 61 million of those LinkedIn users are senior level influencers and 40 million of them are in decision making positions. If you're looking for more clients and more referrals, the people that you're typically looking for are those decision makers and guess what? They're on LinkedIn. And what I'm gonna share with you today are some of the ways that you can reach those decision makers. Now, why is it so important to have a complete profile on LinkedIn? And I'm gonna talk about that as well, because the studies have shown that 50% of buyers will avoid a sales professional with an incomplete profile. And I'm gonna show you a couple of before and afters on that. So you wanna make sure that your profile is complete. It's the number one B2B channel for marketers that are distributing content the number one, and 91% of marketing executives list LinkedIn as the top place, top place to find quality content. Now here's an interesting thing about that. There's two ways to put content out on LinkedIn in the big world other than just through your messaging. One of them is through the posting, and that's similar to what we do on Facebook, that's a post, but the most powerful way to do it is on the platform called Pulse, which is the LinkedIn publishing platform, and less than 3% of all of the millions and millions of people that are on LinkedIn are taking advantage of publishing on Pulse. So that's one of the best places that you can go to be using that. Okay, let's see. So after knowing all of these statistics, it wouldn't be hard to put together that one of your most valuable professional assets that you have today is LinkedIn. So here's a challenge that I have for all of you. Have you ever gone out and Googled yourself? You know, when anybody recommends somebody to you, so let's say that, you know, somebody gives you the name of a real estate agent because you're thinking about buying or selling a home. One of the first things that you're gonna do is go out and Google yourself is Google that person. And there's probably a 70% chance or better if they have a LinkedIn profile that their LinkedIn profile is gonna show up on the first page of Google. So here, um, I actually Googled myself and you know, I joke when I give talks and I say, you know, you don't go blind from Googling yourself and you really should do it. But Patty, who just introduced me, who's the chief learning officer at Connected Women of Influence, when I Googled her name, she showed up right there on the first page of Google. In fact, it was the very first thing that came up with her name. 
So because of the amount of credibility that LinkedIn has, that's probably the first place somebody's going to go and look. They're going to go to LinkedIn. Now, you have seven seconds just about to impress somebody. So this is a picture of one of my clients, Chris. And this is what Chris looked like before. Now, based on looking at this profile, I don't know about you, but I would think that most people, number one, might not even know what he does. And number two, certainly might not be interested enough to want to know more. Number one, and you look at his headshot, his head is cut off. It's, it's just not a great picture because he didn't move it down. Number two, if you look over here in the background, there's this blue background. Well, that's actually the default that LinkedIn gives you. And it's free, absolutely free to put a banner up there. And third, and this is really probably the most important thing, if you look at his title, that's what LinkedIn puts as your headline. If you do not put a headline, they will default what your current title is. So he's the president and CEO of Big Fog, but if you did not know that you were looking for Big Fog or connect with the president, Chris would be completely invisible. So let's take a look at the after. Well, now that blue space has him completely branded. There's his company logo, there's his phone number, and also tells a little bit about what they do. Then let's look at his picture. Now you actually see his full face there. And I was able to put an MBA because that's pretty impressive. And if you have an MBA or a JD or certain certifications that are initials after your name, LinkedIn allows you to put them there but then go and look underneath his name. Now it doesn't say that he is the CEO of Big Fog. What it tells you are the keywords that people are gonna look for to search so he'll come up at the very top. Misting fans, misting systems, outdoor and event cooling, odor content. What Chris's company does is they put in the misting systems when you go to a restaurant or you go to a football stadium or any place where it's really hot and you have those mistings. So, you know, probably in Palm Springs and Florida, you, you will see those misting systems. And now even more so with the people that are growing marijuana and they want to have odor control. So he comes up very high in the searches and also notice that in his headline is his phone number. You want to make it easy for people to reach you. The gold button that you see on the right tells you that he's using the paid version. So if you see the paid version, you know, it's a, you know that that person is, is actually pretty serious. So let's take a look at one quick success story. This is Tia McBride, who's one of my clients, and she's a real estate agent. Now, notice you see in the background, it actually looks like the city of Houston, and that's what she wanted to have there. And her headshot is a very professional headshot of her actually in a home. Now, what happened with Tia was that, notice in her headline, um, Houston real estate agent, working with buyers and sellers, Houston listing agent, Houston buyer's agent, and her phone number. Well, shortly after I did her profile, she called me and she said, Oh my gosh, Rhonda, this is amazing. I had a CEO who was looking to relocate to Houston who found me on LinkedIn and asked if I could help him to buy a home. Now, does that happen all the time? No, but typically, where do we know that CEOs live in the world of their digital footprint and social media? Most of the time, it's on LinkedIn. So for him, it was a natural to go searching for someone to help him buy a home on LinkedIn and she was able to do that. So you never know where that's gonna come from. And the other thing that you wanna notice about Tia is she goes by Tia, but many people know her by Soraya. So I put that there in the middle. So she'll get found in the searches if in fact the CEO, once he moves, is gonna start sharing you know, who helped him to find his beautiful new home. So you do get referrals that way. You don't want to ever underestimate that. Hey, oh, I hope I've not locked here with my slides. Let's see, there we go. So what should your profile look like? Well, if you've ever been to the drugstore CVS, <laughs> it should look like that CVS receipt. It just keeps going and going and going. You wanna make it very complete. And I'm gonna go through and explain what should be on your profile. 
And not necessarily everybody is going to read everything that's on your profile. Just like when you go to Google, you know, typically you go and you look at the first couple of things and you don't look at everything. But you want to make sure that everything is filled out. So what should be on there? Well, number one, a professional headshot. I cannot emphasize enough how important that is. Um, I can't tell you how many pictures I've seen of people that have their kids in the picture, their pets in the picture. Um, I actually had somebody that contacted me once and wanted to know why LinkedIn wasn't working for her. And it was a picture of her with her sister in their college graduation gowns holding a beer. And um, <laughs> not exactly what you expect for an ideal headshot. You want to make sure that you put what you do. You know, there's a place for your summary. You want to fill that up. You want to take up every space and character they give you. You want to put your experience in there. Skills and recommendations, those are very important. And in the skills section, the most important are putting your three highest skills first, and the goal being to get to 99 endorsements for those skills. Because once you're after 99, LinkedIn just says 99 plus. You want to tell people in your summary, why are you different from your competition? And why is that important? Because you have to step into the shoes of the person that's reading your profile when you are writing it. When I write a profile for a client, I'm always standing in the shoes of who that ideal client is. So you want to include that in your summary. You also want to include what others say about you. You want to make sure that your profile not only has the written recommendations, but that you have video or audio recommendations. If you have recommendations, for example, on Yelp or some other Zillow, if you happen to be a real estate agent, take those recommendations and turn them into a slide share document and put them right on your profile. You also want to include your education. And one of the things that many people don't realize is Education does not have to be a formal education. So if you've taken courses, you can put that under your education. You want to put that information that will enhance your credibility. And finally, rich text media. Well, rich text media are white papers. They're testimonials. They're videos. They are PDFs of your flyer, for example. If you're a speaker, you might want to put your speaker one sheet there. There is a place to put all of that underneath every section of your profile. And when you look at that in the context of users with complete profiles are 40 times more likely to receive opportunities through LinkedIn, why would you not complete your profile? So make sure that your profile inspires confidence, that your profile is something that you would be proud to send somebody to, because people are two times more confident in the information they find on LinkedIn than any other social media site. So here's something that I would recommend that you do. Go to one of your friends, your colleagues, your clients, and that you know well and that you trust, and show them your LinkedIn profile and ask them, based on this profile, not how they know you, not what they've done with you, but based on the profile as a standalone, would they do business with you? If the answer is no, then do one of two things. Take it down because you don't get a second chance to make a first impression or optimize it and raise it up because that is gonna make the difference as to whether perhaps somebody calls you or they don't. CWI actually has an amazing member, a friend of mine and a client, Shelly Harrison. And Shelly has a, you're a speaker bureau that, and it's not even a speaker bureau because when speaker bureaus typically work is that speakers get onto a bureau and then people go looking for them they get hired and the speaker bureau takes a percentage. That's not the way that luminary leaders, which is Shelly's business works. So Shelly's business works by helping speakers to actually get booked. They pay a fee to get booked on her site. And she has a large team that reaches out to event planners on behalf of her speakers. 
So if you look at the keywords in her profile and look at that amazing headshot of her speaking, now that's very appropriate for what she does. She has speaker management, specializing in working with speakers, authors, event planners, and decision makers, and there's her phone number. Well, when I upgraded her profile for her, literally she had to go out and get three more people to hire because so many speakers were reaching out. That's how fast her business grew. So how that headline looks, how your banner looks, how you're showing up can have a huge effect on your bottom line and your bank account. And Shelly will tell you that that's absolutely true. So I love this little commercial. People check you out on LinkedIn. Seriously, this is, you know, two people at a date and it's like, oh my God, what are you doing? You're checking out my LinkedIn profile. Everybody that I come in contact with that I have meetings with, I'm always checking them out on LinkedIn. And one of the things that you might want to consider doing is even checking out to see what other people that do what you do are doing. But when you're checking them out, make sure you know exactly how to do that so that they can't see that you are checking them out. There are privacy settings that allow you to do that. So who do you want to connect with and why do you want to be on LinkedIn? Well, number one, the magic number with LinkedIn is 501. They say 500 plus. So you want to grow your connections. Why do you want to grow your connections? Because that's the way that people are going to be able to refer business to you. That's the way that people are going to know about you. You're going to get found. You want to personalize every connection request that you make, whether you're doing it from your phone, and many people, about 40% or greater, use their phone to make the connection requests on LinkedIn. That's where they do their, spend their time. There's the three little dots, so you always want to pull that down and make it a personal invitation. So it might be something like, hi, Patty, um, I noticed we're both in CWI. We share many common connections. It would be great to connect here on LinkedIn and learn how we can network for our mutual benefit. Best regards. As opposed to just hitting connect. When you just hit connect, it just makes you seem lazy. <laughs> so always, and it's true, you know, you always want to personalize that because somebody gets that message and they can see it. And always come from the position of serving, not selling. So when you're making those connection requests and also after that connection request, so after I send my connection request to Patty, for example, there's a good chance she's going to click on my profile. She's going to look at it. She'll see that I have a picture. She sees that I've got a headline. It looks professional, so she'll accept it. Well, what then? If nothing happens, then you really have no place to go with it. So I recommend that you send a thank you message once somebody accepts your connection request. And it might be, hey, Patty, thanks so much for accepting my connection request. I'd love to know more about your business and how I might be a resource for you. And I also recommend that you get a calendaring type of software so that you can literally put a link to say, let's have a virtual cup of coffee. Here's a link to my calendar. Uh, I look forward to learning more. Thanks again for the connection. And again, you never want to be in that position of selling. You can, and oftentimes I recommend it, let that person know a little bit more about you. So in my um, thank you message, I will tell people LinkedIn is an awesome place for making connections. Um, and I might mention a statistic. Did you know that 80% of B2B business is done on LinkedIn? Um, I'd love to know more about you. So it's never about a sales pitch, but you certainly can take that time to let the person know a little bit more about you. Uh, the other thing that you want to be doing all the time is providing valuable content. So how do you provide valuable content? Well, in your posting, you certainly can provide valuable content. So if you know of an event that's coming up, put that in a post. If you just read a great new book, put that in a post. So here's an example that um, I'm going to actually do. So I love listening to books on Audible. It's one of my favorite things to do. And 
I recently just read uh, a book, or I've been listening to a book with Hal Elrod, and it's called The Miracle Equation. And there's so much great stuff in this book, and it's so inspiring. So I might actually post, and I probably will do that, saying, have you listened to or read The Miracle Equation by Hal Elrod? If you're having trouble getting results and believe that the impossible is not possible, check out this book. Now, I'm not going to put a link to something where I'm making money on it. I just want the people that are following me to know about this because they may not know. And how amazing would it be if that changed somebody's business because they got a golden nugget from it. So you always want to be providing valuable content. Um, the other thing that's really important is researching the people that you're going to be meeting with. So if you know that you're going to an event, uh, maybe it's a CWI event uh, and you're a member, you can often see a lot of the people that are going to be at the event. Go check out their LinkedIn profiles so that you know something about them when you meet them in person. It gives you something to talk about. I did a talk about a week ago and I asked for the list of people that were attending. And it made such a difference because I knew that there were people in the room that had taken certain courses or shared something in common with me. So you always want to do that research and you look at the little uh, cartoon there or the little thing with Lee Neeson and it says, I don't know who you are, but I'll look you up on LinkedIn and I will find you. And believe me, they will. So let's go back for a second and talk about Connect, would you connect with someone? This actually was someone that sent me a connection request. And this is exactly what it said. I am multi-talented in lead generation, web research, data entry, data collection, market research. My personal email is my Skype ID. Hire me on Fiverr. I don't even know you. <laughs> would you like to come, you know, instead of a coffee date, would you like to come home, move in, and uh, you know, I can bring everything, including my mother? Like, I don't know you. So I would hit ignore. This is a perfect example of what you don't want to do. Now, here's an example of what you might want to do. Hi, Tommy. LinkedIn's been amazing for me to network and create opportunities. Since we're both business leaders and entrepreneurs, I'd love to connect and learn more about you and your business. Thank you in advance for connect, accepting my, connection, my invitation. Really simple. Now, another tool that you can use in your messaging, which is pretty awesome is if somebody has looked at your profile and you have the paid version, so you know they've looked at you, but they haven't connected with you, you might want to send them a message that says, hi, Tommy, I noticed you looked at my profile. Curious, what sparked your interest? Looks like we share some common connections and some common interests. Let's connect. Look forward to learning about you and your business best easiest way in the world and probably 95% of the people that you do that to will accept your request. So let me tell you about Doug. So Doug is a ghostwriter and not only is he a ghostwriter but he actually does the bestseller campaigns, the funnels, and it's all done for you. And before I had optimized Doug's profile, he couldn't understand why he wasn't getting the results that other people were getting on LinkedIn. So what I did is I changed his banner and I put in the keywords that I knew people were looking for. 100% done for you. Become a best-selling author, get speaking gigs. And in one month, Doug generated $40,000 after I did his profile. Now, do I guarantee that's going to happen for you? Obviously not. My magic wand doesn't work like that. But what I do know is that there is a very simple system that I share on how to make the connection and follow up and get on LinkedIn every single day, connecting with your ideal target market. So for somebody like Doug, he's going to go look for speakers. Why? Because there's so many speakers out there that don't have books. And if they had a best-selling book, that would literally catapult their career to an entirely different level. And that's what happened for Doug when his profile got optimized. So who do you want to connect with? Well, we talked about this a, little, a moment ago, the people that view your profile. 
that's one of the biggest reasons that I recommend you get the paid version. If you know who's looked at your profile and they have not made a connection request, you want to reach out to them if it seems like they would be somebody that would fit your ideal client. You also want to connect with people that read your posts and that like and comment on your posts and share them. So I'll just share a really quick story. I have a friend who's an image consultant. And one day she said to me, hey, can we jump on a Zoom and you can show me some other image consultants on LinkedIn and you know what they're doing? And I'm like, sure. So we get on and I do the search and we come up with, I don't know how many image consultants there were. And we, you know, so for her, it was a really good exercise because she got to see what some people were doing right, some people weren't doing. And it was a way to actually separate herself from everybody else. Now, keep in mind when I was doing this exercise, she was, we were doing it through my LinkedIn profile. The next day, I got a LinkedIn connection request with a message that said, I'd love to connect with you and I'd love to know more about your services. I'm interested in upgrading my profile. And so I literally accepted the invitation, but I picked up the phone and I called her and I said, I'm curious, how did you find me? And she said, oh, I didn't. You actually looked at my profile and for the last two weeks, I've been looking for somebody like you. And when I saw your profile, I knew I had to talk to you. So she became my client because, and I had totally forgotten that I had spent that time looking at image consultants because typically that's not my sweet spot. I'm typically looking at people that are either CEOs, business owners, coaches, speakers, authors, real estate, not image consultants. So you never know where that business is going to come from when somebody looks at your profile. It's a great, great tool. And also people that read your posts. Uh, that's an amazing tool that you want to do. So it brings us to asking, you know, who is going to visit your profile and what are the words that they're going to search on and why that is so important in terms of doing your profile is what are the key words? So if you were to step into the shoes of your ideal client, what words are they going to search for? What is it that you do that they would put in to look for you? So if we go back to the example of Tia, who is a Houston buyer's agent and seller's agent, those were the exact words that the CEO that hired her to find him a home was searching on. So I would ask you to consider what words are people searching for to look for you? You know, it's interesting when you think about CWI, it's an amazing organization with, you know, Los Angeles, San Diego, Orange County, the most incredible people that belong to this organization. But there are a lot of women that don't even know it exists. And I talk about CWI all the time. Now, imagine that Michelle, our amazing leader of CWI, and you will look at her profile and see that, we're in the process of doing it, actually has those key words. Well, some women that are looking to get into professional associations for women leaders, Michelle's profile is gonna come up very, very high. Why? Because people are looking for associations for women that focus on leadership. Makes sense? You want to be very clear about the words people search on. So here's the question I have for you. How much money are you losing by not having an optimized LinkedIn profile and not being active on LinkedIn? And the analogy that I use very often is, you know, when you walk up to that ATM machine and you put your card in, do you walk away without your 20 bucks? <laughs> Every time somebody goes to your LinkedIn profile and they can't find your phone number, and they don't know what other people think about you. And they don't even know what it is you do. Because remember, you have about seven seconds. You're really letting all that money just slip away. So think about this for a moment. Every place that you go is a potential opportunity to network. Connected Women of Influence is an amazing opportunity with Sue Talks and their breakfast and the lunches and their awards. And we have an opportunity everywhere we go to meet people. But how often do we actually 
take those relationships offline and invite people online to say, I'd love to connect with you. I remember that at one of the last CWI events, I sat next to a woman and, you know, one of the first questions I asked her was, are you on LinkedIn? And she's like, oh my gosh, I am. I love LinkedIn. I said, great. I send you a connection request and let's, you know, set a time to talk and learn how we can help each other. Because I don't know who she knows and she doesn't know who I know. So it's really an amazing opportunity to both go from online to offline and offline to online. And when I talk about going from online to offline, that's actually taking your LinkedIn connections and taking them offline so that now maybe you might say to somebody, Patty, you know what? I'd love to get your um, email address. Some people don't even put their email address on their LinkedIn profile. Or I'd love to send you an email. I have a resource that I think you would love and I'd love to share it with you. So you want to go from being in the messaging format of LinkedIn to offline. And maybe that's email or maybe it's a phone call. And one of the things that I really suggest and recommend very strongly to people is use the phone. Pick up the phone and call people. You know, I practice something called 10 before 10, where I reach out to my connections on LinkedIn and I'll get, and I call 10 people and I'll say, hey, Patty, this is Rhonda. We're connected on LinkedIn. I'm not selling anything, but I'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Is this a good time? And if you call 10 people that you're connected to on LinkedIn, you can take that relationship offline. You can have a cup of coffee. You can um, invite somebody to an event. So remember, every place you go is an opportunity to network online and offline and a place to invite. So what's the secret? Well, it's about activity. If you don't go on LinkedIn, you're not going to get any results. So you want to make sure that you are visible because visibility creates opportunity. It really does. When I talk about LinkedIn, I talk about the three Ps. The first one is presentation. How are you showing up? Do you have that professional headshot? Do you have a headline? Is your profile complete? You know, do you appear credible? And then the second P is prospecting. And that's really, how are you reaching out to people? So that's through the messaging, through the connecting. And it's also possibly just sharing with people resources that you have. And the opportunity or the profitability, the third P, really comes from making those appointments to connect with people, to learn more about them. And I recommend that you start a conversation with, how can I help you? What can I do for you? Is there somebody that you might want to meet that I know? As opposed to, you know, starting out with a sales pitch. So, Keep in mind that to be successful on LinkedIn, first it starts with presentation. How are you showing up? Are you dressed for the party? The second part is, are you prospecting? Are you spending 30 minutes a day reaching out, doing a search, making a personalized connection request with those people? Are you thanking them for connecting with you? And then finally, you know, are you posting? Are you being active? You literally can do it in 30 minutes a day, but you have to be consistent. You can't just do it one day a week and then expect that something's going to happen. So before we jump into this, um, are, are there any questions, Patty? I'm going to uh, just kind of uh, stop for a minute and see are there questions that people have that they have jumped in with or yeah we we have some really good questions and uh the the first one is a question about the paid version of linkedin because i know if anyone's been active on linkedin for any length of time they get you know all of those notices about the different services that are available the paid versions from linkedin so can you tell us a little bit about that Absolutely. So there are several versions of the paid version, but for purposes of our audience, I'm not going to talk about the recruiter, because that's people that are in a very specific vertical and they're using LinkedIn for recruiting. Right. So there's premium and then there is sales navigator. And premium is about, um, I believe pre premium is about um, $59 a month. 
or 20% less if you pay for it annually. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the ability to see who's looking at your profile. It also gives you access to a platform called Lynda, L-Y-N-D-A, .com, which is a learning pl platform, which you can get on your own for about $30 a month. Um, the magic really happens in using Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator allows you to do very, very detailed searches. It saves your searches. It will also send you leads when you have searches. And even more importantly, again, you know, you want to be able to see who's viewed your profile. You want to know, and you'll, it will tell you when they viewed your profile. You can actually see that somebody looked at your profile 24 minutes ago and how they're related to you. So you might have one of your first level connections that is looking at you, or you might have somebody that's not connected, but that's looking at your profile and didn't send you a connection request. So the paid version where LinkedIn is telling you, you might want to upgrade, that's because LinkedIn's a business. They were bought by Microsoft in October of 2015. They do give you a free 30 days. So I'm a big proponent of using Sales Navigator and the paid version. It's about $80 a month or $788 a year if you do it annually, 20% less. So the thing that I say to my clients is, what is one client in, you know, as an ROI to you? And for most people, it's going to be more than $60 or $80 a month. So it's you know, very much worth it, in my opinion, to use the paid version. And if you're using it for your business, it's a write-off. So absolutely consider taking the 30-day trial on the paid version. And again, the one thing that I caution people is don't use the paid version until you've really taken the time to upgrade your profile. Because you don't get that second chance to make a first impression. Does that make sense, Patty? Yeah, that was that's a great answer. We had a follow up question to that um, that you had mentioned Pulse and what is that? So Pulse is the publishing platform on LinkedIn. It's literally a place where you can publish articles. And the beauty of that is that many of the influencers, you know, are publishing on Pulse. So you can get articles out there. You can use your hashtags and if you're blogging already, you can actually take the articles that you've used, that you've blogged on, and put them on Pulse. Less than 3% of all of the people that are on LinkedIn are using Pulse. And it's free. It's a great way to take your credibility and visibility up to the next level by publishing articles. You know, and you can publish once a week. You can publish once a month. And they all live on your LinkedIn profile. So somebody that lands on your profile has the ability to go and see all of the articles that you've published. And what that does for you is it elevates your status. If less than 3% of people are publishing and you are one of the 3% that is, well, you're gonna stand out from your competition and it gives you a chance to just share information that your target market that your audience wants to know about. And you, know, you can tie it into things like current events. You can tie it into things that you know would be of interest. So you wanna write those articles from the standpoint of who you want to be reading it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And, and, you know, I was an early adopter of LinkedIn. I mean, way, way back when it very, very first started. And year over year, there's just more and more value out there on LinkedIn. And, and I have come to the place now where uh, I go and search for thought leadership. I go and search for articles out there on LinkedIn. Um, I follow certain influencers that, you know, write about things that are interesting to me. So I think if you're not putting content out there, you're, you're missing a huge opportunity. Absolutely. And something that I would add is that within your content that you're putting out there, whether it's on Pulse or you're putting it in posts, use video. You know, it's really interesting that people overlook the fact that you can establish your authority on your topic using video content. And Pulse allows you 
to actually insert video in those articles. Why? Because video humanizes you. It, it lets people get to know you more intimately. And video also um, is probably one of the easiest ways to get to know you and to consume information. Um, they did a study and they found that 79% of consumers said that video was the easiest way for a brand to get known online. Wow. So, um, and, and three quarters, 74% of consumers pointed to a connection by watching a video on social media that affected their decision-making process. Wow. So wow. You, know, you really want to keep in mind that your overall strategy with LinkedIn is incorporating the rich text media, incorporating video, really putting good content out there, and always coming from the position of serving, not selling. Makes sense? Yes, yes, very much so. Rhonda, what do you what are some of the services that you offer through your business? So I do a done for you uh, profile makeover. And what that really entails is you know almost a facelift to your profile. So it, it includes giving you a brand new banner, it's giving you a headline um, that's highly optimized, writing your summary. Every section of your profile, including your pri including your privacy settings, um, so that's one of the biggest areas. And and with that, I do a lot of strategizing, mm -hmm. because a lot of times people aren't able to step into the shoes of their ideal prospect or their ideal client. So I step into those shoes and ask the questions, so that that profile is very client centric, and there's very little of I I I. It's more about the benefits. Um, the other things that I do is also, I do a lot of LinkedIn coaching, um, helping people with strategies on how they can get more appointments. My clients typically end up getting between two to 10 appointments a week using the system that I teach. And then I also do profile reviews. You know, we all go for our annual checkups, but when was the last time you actually had your profile looked at so that you knew what you could correct, amend, you know, make better, and keynotes. And then finally, I do a lot of on-site training and webinar trainings as well. Oh. So you are truly the LinkedIn diva. You're our resident <laughs> expert here. <laughs> yeah, you know, to me, the, the best part of it is when I get somebody who calls me and they say, oh my God, I've increased my connections by, you know, 300 people. I just got a new client. Um, I also have a strategic partner that does LinkedIn automation. So mm -hmm. if you're not somebody that has a whole lot of time, you can act, and LinkedIn does not allow automation, by the way, um, but there are ways that you can automate and stay below the radar. Um, so it does about 40 hours of work of LinkedIn, and um, it is very, very effective. So that's another way that you can use LinkedIn. Um, and it's such a powerful tool. If your goal is number one, or the only reason somebody not to want to do business with you is they don't like you, because your profile is going to be so bulletproof. Everything that's on there is going to answer the questions in the mind of the person that's there. Well, why should I do business with you? Who are some of your clients? What do other people say about you? What can I expect when I work with you? You know, all of those things. What are your credentials? You know, why should I work with you? So that's why recommendations are so important. That's why having case studies on your profile is so important. That's why having it written in a very client-centric way, not in third person, because we don't talk about ourselves in third person. It's having that external third person view of how you're showing up to make your inbox filled with people that want to learn more about you. Make sense? Yeah, very much. Now you just mentioned uh, recommendations. So what is the difference between recommendations and endorsements? Very good question. So endorsements are what are considered skills and you can have up to 50 skills. Mm -hmm. So you may not have worked with somebody, but you may have heard that they're really great so you can just by clicking on a skill, endorse them. Now, the beauty of an endorsement is when you endorse somebody, they get a notice that you've just been endorsed. So if I were to endorse you, for example, Patty, for public speaking, you do public speaking, right? Right. 
then you're going to get a notice that says Rhonda Sure endorsed you for public speaking. And you probably, if you don't know who I am, or maybe you haven't looked at my profile for a while, you're going to go, wow, that was so nice. And then you're going to click over and look at my profile. So the endorsement is a way for me to stay top of mind with the people that I want to have their attention. And the only thing that really shows up before you see that little button that says click more is the first three endorsements. So you want to make sure that the first three skills that you have are the top three skills that you want people to know about. Because again, the rest of them, they have to click to see more. So you want mm -hmm. to, your goal is to get 99 plus in those top three categories. Now, recommendations are completely different. Recommendations are a third person, third party person who's on LinkedIn that has actually written about you. So how do you get them? Well, number one, you request them and you can actually go onto somebody's profile. So maybe you've done some work with somebody. They said, oh my God, that was amazing. You were great. I loved what you did. You can actually send them a personalized request requesting a recommendation. The other thing that you can do is just give a recommendation. And one of the things that I look at, which is kind of interesting, is where the imbalance lies. So many people will receive a large number of recommendations and then you look and you say, given, and maybe there's a zero or a one. And you think, wow, you know, I know that person. They're not really a taker, you know, but wow, you've received 30 and you've given zero. Mm -hmm. and, and part of it is, it's just, they're not cognizant of it. So you want to make sure that there's a balance between the number that you receive and the number that you give. And if you make it a practice to give recommendations, people will give them to you. Now, the interesting thing about recommendations is, number one, they get dated very quickly because you look and you can see the date that somebody gave you a recommendation. So when I look at profiles and I see, wow, the last recommendation they got was in 2008. It's like, okay, you know, <laughs> my shoe's older than that. <laughs> um, you want to make sure that your, your recommendations are current and that you're doing it on an ongoing basis. And... Because that is really, really important. So I'm just going to share, if, you, if you'll allow me, a really cool tip about recommendations. Can I do that? Yeah, please. So let's say, for example, there's somebody that you're going to be meeting with or that's a potential client, and you want to know more about them. You've read their LinkedIn profile, but you really want to get some insight about them. Well, take a look at the recommendations that they have given. Now, if in fact they actually wrote the recommendations, because oftentimes what people will do is they'll take a shortcut and they'll say, hey, Patty, would you write me a recommendation? And you'll say, and this would never be you, but they, you would say, yeah, sure, Rhonda, why don't you write it, send it to me in a Word document and I'll just write it and send it to you. So it's not really you writing about what you think of me, it's me writing what I want you to say. But the majority of people actually will take the time and write it. So if you see that person has several recommendations that they have given to other people, you might want cut and paste and look at all those recommendations and see what is important to that person because there will be a theme. So it might say, you know, Patty is one of the most generous people with her information. She's highly detail oriented and loves being of service. So whatever you're going to see as a common theme that's written for most of the recommendations, you're going to know that that's what, what's important to that person. And if that is the case, when you start your conversation with that person, speak into their language. If you know that what's important to them, make sure that that's what you talk about. Wow, that's a great tip. Yeah, it's the easiest way to develop rapport with somebody. That's great. That's really helpful. So uh, Rhonda, do you have an offer for our listeners today? I do actually. And let's see. there we go. Okay. So one of the, oops, what happened here? I think I'm, here we go. Uh, so I have a very special offer. Um, and what I do is I spend one-on-one -on -one time actually reviewing your LinkedIn profile with you on Zoom. And I record it and give you a copy. And literally, I will show you your privacy settings. Patty, you would be amazed at the number of people 
that literally do not realize on their profile that they are sending people to their competitors' profiles. <laughs> they don't even realize it because of the way that their privacy settings are done. Wow. Um, yeah, they, there's so many things. There are, so I'm looking at it from the standpoint of, okay, who's your ideal client? And I'm gonna go through and show you very detailed how you can change that so that you no longer will be sending people away from your profile so that you will be attracting the right people to your profile. And so we do that one-on-one -on -one and it's $147. It's a one-time payment. And also um, the bonuses that I want to share with the people that are on this webinar or that reach out is I will actually send you um, a copy of my 52 tips on how to leverage LinkedIn. And also um, I wrote another um, book called 104 Ways to uh, Take the Work Out of Networking. Which is <laughs> yeah. A bunch of bonuses that I share and um, literally it's as easy as just going to PayPal. And as soon as I um, get that, I send you a Zoom link so that you can schedule your call with me. Um, and also I send you all the bonuses and most people just go, oh my gosh, I never knew this. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it's also wish that during that time, you can pretty much ask me anything. My joke is you can ask me anything but my age or my weight and I will tell you. <laughs> That's great. Well, you know, and, and one of the challenges with, with um, online systems like LinkedIn is that they are um, easy you know, they're easy to interact with. And so because it's so easy, it can lull you into thinking you've got it all set up right. You know, absolutely. So, yeah, and having, having a review is a really good idea. And I also show you some of the things that most people don't know, which is you can send messages that are literally voice messages or a video message. So maybe you're not somebody who likes to type. You want to actually send a message with just your voice. You know, so during that time that we're on the phone together, you can literally ask me, okay, well, this is what I want to do. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. you know? And then you get the recordings so you can go back later. And if you decide you want to upgrade your profile yourself, you know, you've got the recording to go do it. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has just been... Uh, so much information. I mean, I, I have been taking notes and um, you and I have talked a number of times, you know, so for me to be still taking down notes as you're talking uh, is, is pretty good. I mean, that's really a, a <laughs> well, testament to that I'm learning some yeah. new stuff here too. You know, and, and if I, do, we, do we have a couple of minutes? I, I just want to share a, a personal story. Can I do that? Yeah, please do. So Interestingly, you know, my personal story was I was married for 28 years and um, I ended up getting divorced. And mm -hmm. it was at the time when, you know, life happens and my world fell apart. My mom was dying. My kids were empty nesting. Um, we were short selling our house. And I literally had to figure out a way that I was going to go out and generate a significant income and didn't even know where to start because, you know, speaking was not happening back um, in 2008, 2009. So I went on to LinkedIn and I went out and got my life insurance license because I had done that in the past. And I went to all of the mortgage agent, the mortgage brokers on LinkedIn. And I approached them and asked them if they were working with anybody for mortgage insurance. Now life insurance is mortgage insurance, right? Mm -hmm. And I helped them a little bit with their LinkedIn. I would tell them, Oh, by the way, you know, give them a couple tips. And um, within about six weeks, Seriously, within six weeks, I was generating six to $7,000 a month from using LinkedIn and reaching out to the mortgage brokers. Wow. And what happened, which was really interesting, is six, so six years later from the time I got divorced, I ended up remarrying my ex-husband. So I joke and say I'm a <laughs> husband and a husband, didn't have to change my name and the kids are ours. <laughs> you know, but the reality is that, you know, everybody faces difficult times in their life. And they wonder, you know, how can I get business? How can I get, how can I find people that are going to help me? And LinkedIn is that vehicle. I literally imagined myself as a Walmart reader. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to go through my savings, go through my retirement. And 
I realized that LinkedIn right in front of me was a way that I could reach out to people and be of service. So, you know, if I could do this, anybody could do this. And that's, that's a great story, really. Yeah. So, you know, it, it really is. And I used LinkedIn literally to generate a very, you know, steady ongoing income. And I never ran out of clients. And to this day, I still practice the same thing. I no longer sell life insurance, you know, but I do use LinkedIn every single day to meet new people. Um, that's great. And I also have a gift. So I created a LinkedIn planner and you can just go to the website, rondashur.com and you can download that and it has amazing information in there that can help you to upgrade your profile. And it's completely free. Uh, and it's an instant download that you'll get as soon as you put in your information, it'll get, it'll come to you within about five minutes. That is a, a great gift. And I think you have the perfect name, you know, <laughs> you, you are a, a great sharer of information and so forth. So I, I really thank you for your generosity and for being our thought leader today. And to all of our attendees that are online today, thank you for joining us. And we'll be back on June 10th when Linda Lotto presents Stuck, Love Your Work Again in our Women Lead webinar series on how you can lead, achieve, and succeed as a female leader in business. So thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Thanks again, Rhonda. You're welcome. Bye.